Okay, and so in this video, we're going to be doing chapter 7, which is the end of the fourth quarter and the year. So we'll be doing adjusting entries and then closing the book. So the first thing they do is give you, you know, a pretty quick run through of what adjusting entries are, but you should remember um, from Accounting 101 that that's just basically bringing all your accounts up to date. So here we'll be dealing with prepaid rent, prepaid insurance, and depreciation. Okay, and then we're going to be closing the book, and it's a fairly simple procedure, but you want to make sure all your numbers are correct before you do this procedure. All right, and then usually they have you check your data, and last chapter we ended with the trial balance 101, 91, 81, so we should be good there. And the first thing they have us do is write our... Um, payments to the Arizona Department of Revenue and Illinois Department of Revenue for sales tax. But before we even get started, I saw that there was an error with mine. So if you come over here, well, let's go into invoice. There's two invoices that were supposed to be um, Springfield Unified School District, and it should be going to Illinois. We had to override the amount. If you remember, I explained to you that there is an issue in that the tax for Illinois have changed. So the first thing I made a mistake with is 1029, the last invoice from last chapter. Um, it should have been to Springfield. So we're going to open up 1029. You might have caught this, so if you caught it, then you don't have to do this, but I have to do it. I have to change this now to Springfield Unified School District, and then the location, you're going to want to make sure it says Springfield, Illinois. So I'm going to copy and paste this here, or you could just delete it and write it over. So I'm going to put this here because you want you want it to uh, come up as Springfield, Illinois. But watch what happens when we do that. When we do that, it says the sales tax is $39, but in the book, it's supposed to be $25. But when we go to see the math, we can see Illinois' tax went significantly higher than when it was in 2018 when the book was written. So we have to override this amount. We show uh, six point, um, what is it, six point, what was Springfield, Illinois, like? I gotta go all the way back to the, I think it's six point, here it is, Springfield, Illinois, nice for me, it's page 244. No, it's not. Give me just one second, I apologize. I gotta find out what percentage it is. I feel like it's 6.25, but. Well, I can't find it. We're gonna do, we're just gonna override and see what we get for 25, because it should come out to $25. So I'm going to put over here 6.25 and see if that comes out to 25. It does. So it is 6.25. And then for the reason, we'll just say other, okay? And then push confirm and close. And then that'll bring it to 425. We're just going to do that to be aligned with the book. I said it and I mentioned it, but I didn't realize that it was still, it just used um, the Arizona. So we need to make sure it's for Springfield so that it gets applied to the correct um, Department of Revenue. So we're now going to go save and new because we're going to have to go back in and change 1010 because 1010, we did write that to Springfield Unified School District. However, we didn't override the amount properly. Well, what, what ended up happening was, you'll see in a second when we get there, it ended up applying it to Arizona. So as Arizona is showing um, that $50 because altogether there should be $50 that we owe and I'll show it to you here. $50 we owe Illinois, and we don't have that. So at least I didn't have it. So, um, so I'm going to edit this. Where's the 10 cent? Here it is. Why didn't it let me go in it? Okay, here we go. So over here, we're going to change uh, 1010 to Springfield Unified School District, but we're going to come back over here and put the Illinois. And then we're going to come down here. It does have 625, but it's going to change to 39 because we're going to put, and that's where we have to do it again to override this amount. You're going to put 6.25, and the reason being just say other confirm and close. So it's still going to be, with the, it didn't change the number at all. It's still 425. So our books are still the same. It's just that we need to make sure that that $50 is going to Springfield um, Department of Revenue. Oops, I, I, 
I want to say the name. Are you sure? Yes, I want I'm positive. Okay, so now I'm going to exit out of here. And when we go to the chart of accounts, you want to make sure that uh, it shows that $50, because we're going to look at the checks in a second, what we have to write, that 208 shows $50 and that 207 shows 178181. Now it's correct because before I didn't have that. I had the $50 in just the Arizona Department of Revenue. And as I explained to you in an earlier video, that's because um, the tax rate changed. So unfortunately, we're just going to override it and to be aligned. So let's go ahead and pay our taxes now. So we're going to come over here to check and we should be on check number 10. 65 okay and then we're going to come over here and put Arizona Department of Revenue and in the category you're going to select 207 Arizona Department of Revenue because we're going to be paying that liability and it's 178181 I believe so let's go back over here and let me just double check 178181 so let me check the date. You should have 12 31 2022 because it's the last, everything we're doing today will be for the last uh, day in December. So it's 12 31. You have Arizona Department of Revenue as the check is being written to. You have 207 Arizona Department of Revenue and it should be for 1781 81. And we're going to go save in now. I actually did a little video before this and caught like, wait, where's that $50? So. I had to redo this video so that we did it correctly. Now we're going to do um, Illinois' Department of Revenue. Now, by the way, you might not have these, so you might have to go add new. So on that first one, you might have realized, I don't have Arizona Department of Revenue, so you had to go add new Department, Arizona Department of Revenue. And here, you have to add new Illinois' Department of Revenue. And it should be 12-31-2022, and it's check number 1066. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to select 208. Illinois Department of Revenue, and it should be for $50. I'll go save anew and just make sure I have the correct balance, which should be $53,468.52, which I do, and that says that right here. So the next thing we're going to do is the end of quarter adjusting entries. They just briefly go over this because they know you had the prerequisite course accounting 101. So we're going to do these three journal entries right here. We're going to um, adjust and apply our expenses for rent, insurance expense, and depreciation expense. So when we do our adjusting entries, we do them manually. So we're going to go to plus sign new and under other. The third one down is journal entry. We should be on journal entry number two. So you're going to make sure you have number two here. And that you have the date 12-31-2022. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to debit rent expense. And rent expense is 623. And that's going to be for $6,000 because we paid $2,000 a month in rent and we had created that prepaid rent which is 123. So we have prepaid rent gets credited and then over here we're going to write adjust prepaid rent. And that's going to be save and new because the next one is going to be our prepaid insurance. So we're going to debit insurance expense. So we're on journal entry number two. And that I believe is 611 insurance expense. And that's going to be for $750. And then we're going to credit. We're going to bring, you know, we'll bring that balance to zero for prepaid insurance. Or actually, I'm not sure what how much prepaid insurance. But I know the other one was zero. Um, prepaid insurance, and we're going to put seventy, and then we're just going to put adjust prepaid insurance and save a new. And the last one is depreciation expense. So most companies, you know, they might have several things. They're depreciating vehicles, machinery, and so on, computers. So you're obviously not just going to have depreciation expense and adjust it because you're going to have a little, a little bit more specific saying what it is. But this company, like this is, you know, for simplistic reasons. So we're going to be debiting it 800. We're acknowledging that expense and we're putting it into accumulated depreciation. 137, that contra asset account that goes against that fixed asset. And then we'll put over here adjust 
depreciation. All right, and then this one's going to be save and close. So we did our three journal entries, and then the first thing they showed us is that's all we're really doing for this chapter, and then we're going to close. So they're showing us our journal entry. All we did here was write our check to pay our sales tax to Arizona, pay our sales tax to Illinois, and our three adjusting entries. The um, two things you have to save from this chapter is the trial balance and the, uh, I think it's the statement of cash flow. Let me just check real quick. Yep, the statement of cash flow. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to come over here, and I'm going to go to reports. And I'm going to start to type in trial balance. And this is going to be from October 1st to December 31st. Run report, and it should be 100,060. So then you're going to come up here and save it as PDF and save it as the chapter tells you, and in the chapter it tells you to save it as chapter seven underscore adjusted trial balance. Oh no, I'm sorry, you know what? Yeah, you can save it as adjusted trial balance because they're telling you to, to, to do the trial balance after. See, if you remember in Accounting 101, we talked about adjusted trial balance and post-closing trial balance. That's what actually the trial balances that you have after. So this is adjusted trial balance because it's after we did our adjusting entries. So go ahead and save it as that, adjusted trial balance. The next thing you have to save is the statement of cash flow. So go back to reports and you start to type in statement of cash flow. And for the statement of cash flow, we're also going to be writing, I believe, uh, October 1st to, I'm just checking, double checking for you. Yes, October 1st to December 31st. So October 1st to December 31st, run report. And it should be 5346852, which we know because we checked our balance to make sure. That's that our checking account balance. And we made sure that that was 5346852. So you're going to save that. Those are the two ones you're going to send to me in lieu of the smart book. The next thing we're going to do Let's look at this. And then they have other reports on um, profit and loss. And certainly read the rest of this, okay? All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is close the fiscal year. So we're going to end December 31st. Um, yes, December 31st, 2022 will be our last day of business for the year of 2022. So the way we close our books is to go to your balance sheet and put in 1-1-2023 to 1-1-2023. Immediately, whatever is in your net income account will then transfer into your retained earnings account. And that should be familiar to you because we talked about retained earnings. That's kind of like your capital account if it was a, a sole proprietorship, which we uh, looked at with Accounting 101. So these are the monies that uh, the corporation is going to hold and decide, well, what are we going to do? Are we going to pay dividends? Are we going to expand on the business? Um, and obviously would have to reach out to their owners and tell them what they plan to do with their retained earnings. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to go to our balance sheet. My numbers are all correct. If your numbers are not correct, stop here. Do not close. But mine are all correct. So I'm going to come over here to balance sheet, and I'm going to write 101. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let me put this here. I'm going to do 11. 2023 to 1-1-2023. And once I push run report, I have now closed my books. Okay? And now that I've closed my books, okay, I'm going to see that retained earnings now has that 7093.52. That was my uh, net income for the year. It just went into retained earnings. And that's what they kind of discuss here with you in the chapter, okay? So if you were to go to your dashboard for 2023, you would show there's no profit because we've just started today. We're pretending like it's January 1st, okay? And then they say to go look at your post-closing trial balance because now you see retained earnings. You don't need to save it, but I do encourage you to do this and look at that and see the difference now. Now that would be your post-closing trial balance. 
This is very important for you to read because if you want to get certified, you should be familiar with the different reports and what they stand for. So they go over what business overview is, what your favorites are, um, you know, your accounts receivables, your accounts payable. Um, there's several questions on the certification um, reports that look at your 1099 contractor and what's uh, balance detail or balance summaries and so on. So you're going to read all of this on your own, okay? And then we're going to do the homework. And the homework is just simply, I think I said it in the last one, doing our bank reconciliation. Oh, no, actually, I forgot. This chapter right here, we did our bank reconciliation last time. This chapter right here is a vocabulary one. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into a, a Microsoft Word document because many of you have Office 365 accounts. Or you can even use your um, Google Docs. I don't really care what you you can save it as a PDF or you can save it as a doc. This is the only one that you can save non-PDF. You're going to write down all these report names, and then you're going to write the letter that goes to it. So it says, A, summarizes key information, for example, quantity on hand, value, and average cost of each item. Obviously, this has something to do with inventory, right? So it's, you're going to make sure to put this A to whatever the appropriate um, report it goes to, okay? So you're going to put the letter here, but you're not going to... I don't think you can copy and paste. Somebody said they were able to, but instead you're just going to type up all these, unless you can figure out how to copy and paste it. I believe this is copywritten. You're going to write down all these report names, and you're going to put the letter that goes to it. You're going to save it, and um, that's what you're going to send along with Chapter 6 homework, which was that bank reconciliation. You're going to send me those two files as your project. And that ends it. I told you guys Chapter um, 7 was very quick, and this also will allow me in this next class to work with many of you that need to catch up. All right, thank you.